and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to have a look at the serial console for router. So as you can remember, we have this router from another video. And now we are ready to play with the serial console. So here we have the TX power ground and RX from what I can remember remember. So we will need some power of course. Make sure it's turned off. And then we will connect the wires. Now we don't need the power because yeah, we don't need it in this case, but we do need the other ones, and it's important that we have the ground connected. So if we connect it as such, let's see. White and green. Then we can try and see if it works. So this is enough. And next we will need to connect the to the serial console. So you open Potsy and then you select serial. And then you write the COM number. In my case it's COM4. And the board speed is 115,200 or just 115 200. So just click open. And then we will just maximize the window. And as soon as we press this button, either it will work or it won't. So in my case, it looks like I don't have, I do have power. Well, that's a good sign. Because we can see this pin here means that there's power. But there's nothing on the console. So there's a good chance that either the header is bad, even though I tested it recently and it wasn't bad, or these two wires are connected incorrectly. So power off the device. And switch these two pins. So it's the green here and the white one here and try again and we have a screen and the cool thing is that uh, this is like completely different to for example a phone where you hack into the secure boot here you can hack into the bootloader and you can also try and have ac gain access to the shell so in my case I already know like the different commands and stuff like that so you can see a lot when the device boots up. You can see the MAC addresses and what, whatever goes on. And if you type TPL while it's starting up, you will gain access to this boot menu, which is shown down here. So if you type a question mark or write help, you will have a list of commands. And if you, for example, write, where is it? Uh, maybe it's set environment, print environment. So if you take a look at the print environment, I actually tried to change the init to bin bash or bin sh to get a shell, but unfortunately it didn't work because otherwise we could have gotten direct root access to the, to the device. So we will probably have to flash the device for this command for it to work. But for now it's good enough. So we can run the boot command and now you can see the device booting up. So that's that's pretty cool that you can see everything that goes on behind the scenes. And that's basically like a backdoor into the router for debugging or hacking purposes in case you have physical access to the device. So that's quite useful actually. So once it has booted up, it will print per send us with a login screen. Unfortunately, I don't know the login password, even though I have tried to look it up. And I've even tried to crack it as well without any luck either. So I'm quite surprised that it's not that easy to crack this password. Because usually they, ha they feature fairly weak passwords. And if we press enter, you can see here is the login. Of course, I already tried to log in with root root and stuff like that, but it didn't work. So that's a shame. 
So that's why I wanted to change the boot parameters to bin bash because that would bypass the login screen. So for example, if we scroll up, we can see a few things. We can see which version of Linux it's using. It's using an outdated kernel, which is vulnerable to privilege escalation. So if we have command injection somewhere, we should be able to escalate our privilege privileges to root fairly easily. And you can see it says Tomcat, which is an interesting choice of web server. So that could have some issues as well. We have the CPU revision and then it's running MIPS. And let's see, this is the kernel command line. So when you, when you run the command set environment, I'll just scroll up again. So if you run the command set environment and you try to set this, it will still default to, to the bootloader further down the kernel command line. So you need, even if you try to set it differently, it will still default back to this. So that's a bit annoying, but we could still flash it uh, either partially or completely, and then we could get, ex uh, get access. Or we could just override the, uh, the firmware completely and install something different, which we will get to uh, in another video. Anyway, stay tuned and subscribe.